So Apple's A19 Pro and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite mark two different philosophies in mobile chip design. Apple's A19 Pro, with its six-core CPU split into two performance and four efficiency cores, doesn't try to compete with Snapdragon's sheer core count, but instead doubles down on efficiency and raw single-core strength. This design means that in day-to-day -day usage, whether it's app launches, UI responsiveness, or light multitasking, Apple consistently feels faster because iOS is optimized to take advantage of those high-performance bursts. The Snapdragon 8 Elite, on the other hand, is built like a muscle car with its 8-core Orion setup, running two prime cores at a blistering 4.32 GHz and six others at 3.53 GHz. On paper and in multi-core benchmarks, it wipes the floor with Apple. But that advantage shows up mainly in workloads that can actually scale across many cores, such as heavy multitasking, emulation, or advanced productivity apps on Android. In real-world scenarios, Apple still holds the crown for per-core efficiency, meaning it does more with less heat and less battery drain, while Qualcomm takes the crown when everything is thrown at it at once. Shifting to the GPU, Apple's six-core design inside the iPhone 17 Pro and Pro Max is all about balance, pushing roughly a 40% leap over the A18 Pro, while still scoring around 792,000 points in Antutu GPU tests. What makes Apple stand out is not raw horsepower but consistency. Its vapor chamber cooling, expanded cache, and iOS-level optimizations ensure the GPU doesn't throttle easily, so extended gaming sessions or pro-grade video editing remains smooth. Qualcomm's Adreno 830 GPU in the Snapdragon 8 Elite takes a different route, chasing raw graphics supremacy with a sliced architecture of three clusters totaling 12 compute units, scoring well over a million in GPU-heavy benchmarks. In practice, this gives Snapdragon phones an edge in high-end Android gaming and GPU-intensive apps. But the trade-off is higher power draw and a greater dependence on each OEM's cooling system to prevent throttling. So, while Snapdragon wins on paper with bigger numbers and more raw firepower, Apple's approach ensures steadier, more efficient performance that feels faster in everyday use and sustains better under thermal pressure. Apple builds for harmony between hardware and software, squeezing maximum efficiency out of fewer cores, while Qualcomm builds for brute force, offering raw power that shines in benchmarks and specialized heavy workloads. Both are leaders, but they deliver performance in very different ways, and which one feels better ultimately depends on whether you value consistency and efficiency or unrestrained maximum output. So what do you guys think about both the processors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video.